we're going to be talking about the amazing country of South Africa. South Africa is a truly magnificent place and a place that I hold dear to my heart. I spent a good deal of time there um, just exploring and getting to know the culture there. You've got almost 1,200 miles from the cliffs in Cape Town and Table Mountain all the way to the northeastern section, which is carved out by the Limpopo River. You've got the temperate and mild Indian Ocean, which is over on the east side with Durban, and you've got the icy Atlantic on the other. You have the giant peaks of the Drakensberg Mountains and incredible wildlife, lions, leopards, elephants, all the different amazing wildlife you can imagine. And it's truly a fascinating place. So today we're going to be talking about a map, uh, which is from 1920. So this map actually predates um, a lot of the modern history of South Africa. It wasn't until the early 1900s that South Africa unified the different states of South Africa, but I think it's important that uh, we're going to explain the context and how we got to uh, this time. And this is the map right here, as you can see. Um, it's the Transvaal region, so we're going to really focus in on that. Um, and I think that you're going to find it really interesting because, again, it does differ uh, from the modern times. So. To begin with, let's start with just a brief history of South Africa. So, South Africa is really the history of mankind because, of course, mankind uh, came from that region. Um, it really started about three million years ago, um, and it really began with the Aust Australopithecus. Um, that was a, uh, a version of modern man, man that began there. Um, I'm not an expert on that particular aspect, um, but about a hundred thousand years ago, and that's sort of the beginning of modern mankind. So, what's different about South Africa from a lot of other countries is it really begins in the Stone Age, and the Stone Age is broken up into several different parts, which we don't have time to get into here today. But you can still see some of the rock art and paintings that of the rock art paintings that exist there today, and it's amazing. Um, that really started with the San and the Khoi Khoi people who are from that region. It wasn't until about the uh, fourth century that uh, the Bantu-speaking people migrated there and uh, brought their Iron Age technology uh, to South Africa. So this is long before uh, Europeans arrived and changed the course of South African history. So again, we don't have time to really delve into that prehistory, but it's just super important to know. Um, it wasn't until about the 1480s that uh, Bartholomew Diaz arrived and went around the Cape of Good Hope, the southern tip of Africa. Um, it was Jan van Riebeek, who uh, was of the Dutch East India Company, and he came and essentially they created a colony now, of course, this was coexisting with the people who were um, from there originally, but that colony grew and it imported crops. And unfortunately, a slave trade did originate um, because they were coming from Madagascar and those places and being brought through. And they needed a place to unfortunately refuel and get supplies. So that is a sort of just a, a dark history of that particular uh, part of South Africa and its founding. Um, and of course, again, it does really start with colonialization um, in that in that regard. So, in about the 1680s, the French Huguenots uh, left, escaping persecution and persecution in France. And then, of course, the the 1700s. That's really when the British came into uh, South Africa, and there was a lot of tension between them and the Bantu speaking um, and. Also speaking chiefdoms. So, again, I did my best click there. I hope that I did okay. <laughs> but uh, it, it is a difficult, uh, difficult a consonant or a vowel or what, yeah, sound um, if you haven't uh, spent a lot of time there. But again, we're moving onward, and the English essentially and the Dutch fight for control of this uh, country. They have a bunch of wars. Um, and it really isn't until, uh, and, and actually I would say in the early 1800s, the British 
really take a lot of control. And so it really isn't until about the 1830s when they abolished slavery, uh, where this just really became untenable uh, for the Boers, who were again of, related to the Dutch. Um, but what's very interesting is they found diamonds and, of course, gold. And this really, to this day, has set South Africa up for a lot of success economically um, and set them up as the leaders for the mid-20th century. So they're still benefiting from these discoveries, but uh, essentially they'd found these things and the British, of course, wanted these natural resources. So they really pushed the Dutch into a corner and that's really when they, um, the Dutch left. Um, so this is, again, like going into the 1800s. Um, they pushed into the eastern region, which was called the Great Trek. And they founded the Orange, uh, I think it's the Orange State, and also the Transvaal. Um, and uh, South Africa really was broken into multiple regions. At the same time, uh, Shaka, King Shaka, who was the leader of the Zulu people, he was also leading a resistance against the English. And so as the 18th century kind of progressed, the British really asserted their dominance in that area. He took over the Transvaal. Um, and again, there was multiple conflicts um, and that the Anglo-Boer Wars, which were unfortunately very uh, 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 violent conflicts. But that said, um, a lot of laborers from India arrived, and really that melting pot of South Africa was created uh, despite some of the, uh, the issues that I mentioned previously. So it wasn't really um, until the 1910, when, as I mentioned, those multiple states, Natal, um, you had uh, the Orange State, and you had Transvaal, and you had the uh, South Africa, the colony, which was the British area, and they all combined into the one South Africa that we know today. Um, again, this was a kind of a whites only um, ruled government, so it wasn't, it didn't include the native people who lived there. Um, so in that way, it was extremely unfair and unequal. And it was also about two years later in 1912, uh, which was the founding of the ANC, which was the, uh, uh, the party of Nelson Mandela. And again, we don't have time to get into this Video for this video because this map is only from 1920. But if you know it, some of your history there, uh, it is until much later in the 40s when apart the, uh, apartheid begins, which is essentially a policy of separation between whites and blacks. So that was really complicated and, and very racist history. Um, and as you know, in the 60s, Nelson Mandela fought for freedom and rights. And that really led to um, uprisings in Soweto and things of that nature. And it wasn't until much later that actually apartheid was done away with. And you see an equal government that includes all the people who live there. So I think it's really important to just to mention that before we dive into this map, that this world that we're looking at is much different than the world today. And it was a world where a lot of injustice existed as it does today, but I think to a different degree at that point. So that all said, let's go look at this super interesting match, which, uh, map, which I, which I think will really reflect South Africa's history and kind of give you an idea. Um, again, this is the Transvaal region, so it's one particular region, but I think you'll find it super interesting. So let's go take a look. Okay, so... We have our map right here. This says the Harmsworth New Atlas. And it says the Transvaal. So we can look through here. It has some pictures of old cities in the Transvaal, old Johannesburg. And we have um, Pretoria, I saw over here somewhere. Fall River, there's Pretoria there. Um, it talks about some of the South African Bantu people. Sort of on this side here. Uh, Pretoria Church Street, which the magnificent Union buildings face. So that's right there. Pretoria buildings in the Union of South Africa built 1910 to 19. 
Finally show some of the classes. Typical crawl of native dwellings with matte screens. I'm trying to um, just be really careful because I'm not sure what kind of language is this atlas is going to use. Um, here is, I'll read this little section here. The Transvaal. The Transvaal is a holy inland province of the Union of South Africa between the rivers Vaal and Limpopo. The Vaal in the south separates it from the Orange Free State in Limpopo on the north and west from Bechuanaland. It is also bounded by the Cape Province, Natal, Rhodesia, which is current day Zimbabwe, and on the east by Portuguese uh, territory, which would be Mozambique. It is an area with 110,426 square miles, or only a little less than that of the United Kingdom. The 19 Kingdom of uh, 1920, that is. Um, before 1903, it was somewhat larger, but in that year, certain districts were taken from it and added to Natal. Um, the population of the province is 1,686,212, of whom 420,562 are European, so that's about one-third. These people are divided into Boers and Britons, and that's kind of what I talked about um, just a few moments ago. The natives belong largely to the Bantu people and are mainly found in the north and northeast. Um, males largely outnumber females. Um, as regards religion, about half the whites in a number um, all of the natives largely belong to the Dutch churches. Anglicans, Presbyterians, Methodists, Roman Catholics, and Jews are also numerous. Victoria is the capital, but Johannesburg is the much uh, largest. The much is much the largest town. So, uh, the great mountain range of the province is the Drakensberg, dividing it into two very unequal portions. So again, this a lot of this applies to today. Uh, you can see down here in the industries. It says the two main industries of the province are uh, the raising of gold on the Witwatersrand and farming on the Veld. The gold began to be mined about 1882, and the field has proved to be probably the richest in the world. So you can see some more. There's deposits of copper, lead, and platinum. About 2 million acres uh, under cultivation for potatoes, maize, and tobacco, oats, and barley. Um, so it's actually really interesting just because I want to get to the map section, but as you can see, this again, this is from 1920, um, and it would have been two separate pages, um, but it's been combined here, so you can see. Clerk Dwarf. This is kind of interesting down here. It says a um, government office at a small administrative center. Clerk Dwarf, old village across the Schoenspreet, was the first poor settlement in the Transvaal in 1838. The new town dates from 1888 and is a gold field center. And since this time, a lot of that, some of the names have changed. I believe Nelsbright, which was one of the towns there, did have a name change. Um, and I can't remember what they changed it to at this, um, just off the top of my head, but, um, you know, just due to the, to the demographics and history, um, it made sense to do that. Although I'm sure in South Africa, probably there are a lot of opinions on those kind of things, but, um, this is for another video, perhaps. So... Again, I think this kind of is just a really strange view of 1920s South Africa. 
And that leads me to the next section here. So let's go ahead and just turn this here. It can be very gentle here. Mozambique, so the Portuguese, of course, that was um, where they were at that time. Um, we can see here for the north, we've got Rhodesia, which is uh, the current Zimbabwe. So a lot of these names probably are different. I would love to hear from somebody from South Africa. Uh, I know a lot of these uh, bigger cities, but I don't know some of the smaller ones, so It'd be really to cool, really cool to hear uh, how some of those have changed. Let's just go ahead and read through some of these um, cities and places. Uh, one other thing I'd like to point out here is this. Um, it's a map of the city of Witwatersrand, and uh, here's Joburg or Johannesburg see like just some of the streets and stuff it's a bit small for me to read the print here but it's just so cool to imagine what they were like in 1920. we also have over here this is uh pretoria so um that's another area that's you know these are modern big cities um and um it's just so cool to imagine them back in those days so we can see start over here we've got the Indian Ocean here so again that's this says from Durban right here um, and um, this is to Inyambani so that's again one of the little I think it's one of the islands over there if I'm not mistaken um, but um, I hear no down here this is Zululand down in here so let's go ahead and start with just some of these years we got yeah, Zulu and Natal. We got the Umkusi River down here. We have Lake Sibai, Lake Kosi. We've got Latikulu. I think it's actually like Hlati, Hlati Kulu. I could have been mispronouncing, but I think that's the right, right pronunciation. Good. Pieteratief. We have Swaziland. Now again, it was the, in the late 18, I think it's the 1880s that um, Swaziland and some of those other areas became their own um, regions. Lesotho as well. Umbani. Bombo. We've got Mangayana. We've got this is a Delagoa Bay. This is there's gonna be some Portuguese names here. Lake Chuale. River Incomati, Barberton. So I think these are the regions of the Transvaal. Um, I'm not sure if this is the city limits here, um, but these are just little regions and within them, like Carolina. It says here, and there are little cities. It's hard to read them here, but Barberton is a city as well. I mean, it's located right there. Got the Sabi River, Leidenberg. We've got Petersburg. 
Petersburg is also a city which is located right here. We've got... Let's go back down here, actually. Baxter, Baxter, I think it says there. Ryeheld. I can see this one, Utrecht. That's funny, that that's also down here. Um, but it makes sense with the Dutch influence. Newcastle. Of course, next to Utrecht, right there. Ermelo, also a town. Amsterdam is right there. We've got Ermelo. Amsterdam. Evergreen. Little Free State. This is interesting over here. We have the Limpopo River. The Lebombo Mountains. Shingwedzi Game Reserve. Sutpansberg. Scruton's Lease. It's an interesting name. There's the Limpopo River forming that boundary there. We've got the Middleburg, I think we said Middleburg, Bethel, also a town right here. Standerton, Margensen, I think I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, Walker's Throne is also a town down here. This is like it says a Majuba Hill. It's hard to read that. Nelly's Galley. We've got this is Lewisburg. We've got uh, what else here? I'll move over this way. Helbron. Frankfurt, also very interesting. A lot of European names here. So I think that German influence, because we have Frankfurt, we've got Heidelberg here, um, which I think is related to that German influence there. Again, um, Namibia was a colony of Germany during this time, so that could explain that. Um, we have Elon's River. Got Moss River. We've got Rustenburg. Marico. We've got um, Pachev's Throne. Got Blomhof, Lichtenberg, Ulmarenstadt, we have the Cape of Good Hope, we have Berlong Farms, Lichtenberg the city, we have Betjuana land. It says the Bangwaketsi Reserve. Bakwena Reserve. Bakatia Reserve. We have the so it looks like Maloyo River. So we've got some other areas here. Rosenkall. Mountains. We've 
got Laysdorp. So it looks like Mashishimala Hills. We've got the, uh, what else? We've got over here, uh, Lorenco Marquez. Let's actually move this here so you can see it. We've got Mwamba. Lake Viti. Pongola River. This is the Umbombo Range. We've got the Paul Petersburg. Looks like Lunberg, Lineberg. Let's look at some. This way. We have Vryberg over here again. We've got the Overyall, Mavirstadt. We've got Italia Camp. Italia Camp. Mutman, Warren Store, Van Reenen, Bester, Bugubugu Hills, Indaba Zezwi, Severni Store. Warren Store. That's really interesting, those store names there. Moore's Store. Bremersdorp. Mbabani. I think it's Mbabani. Yeah, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Buckhams. Doesn't say what, though, just maybe. Peak, it just says there. Man Mananga Point. So again, I think this is all kind of in the uh, Drakensberg mountainous region, and sort of in that area. We've got Graskop. Nwamba, Nwamba Swamps. We've got, what else here? Nightingale. Lewis, I think we saw Lewisburg earlier. And uh, this one says, Leor Crawl. We've got Berg Plants. Imbo One Cup. It looks like it says Dork down there, but I don't feel like that's right. Stains Dorp. Komati River. Or we've got Nigel. We've got Sugarloaf. I think we saw that earlier. Lindley. Hoopstadt. This is the Fall River here. As you can see, the Limpopo and the Fall River, that's the main borders there. This is Mafekin. Mafeking. I'm not sure the correct pronunciation there. We've 
God. Masood's cop. We have here we have Paddington. This is looks pretty. Valsh River. Crunch dot. Let's go over here. We've got a Kulingani. Unyome. Black Umford River. Blood River. Townhauser. Inyangame. Avelin's Pass. Miller's Pass. Moisen. Moyen River, Commando Pass, Vitkopsch, Roosterwacht, Waterfall, Grootspruit, Valbank. Cup Amar Start and Maryvale Usulu River and last but not least this looks like here we have Prot Bamangwato Preserve and this is a Thule block. River. That's of course Elephant's River right there. Alright, so I hope that you found this map to be very interesting and relaxing. I learned a lot and I think that uh, there's so much more to discuss and I plan to do more videos on South Africa, including a travel video at some point uh, when I get a chance to go back out there sometime in the near future. In the meantime, Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you have a really great evening. Good night.